Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Courtney and I'm a full-time reseller on Poshmark and eBay. And today I'm here with a video around eBay shipping, primarily geared towards people selling on Poshmark who maybe want to start cross-listing and potentially selling things on eBay. So I have actually tried to film this a couple times and I think I've been getting kind of rambly and I don't want this to be an extraordinarily long video. So I will try to keep this relatively brief to hopefully give some of uh, my thoughts around what, what I did to start selling on eBay and what I kind of figured out works for me. So it's going to be split up in three things. What options do you choose when you create a listing on eBay as far as shipping? What materials you might need or things that you might need to actually get the item shipped out? And then lastly, when you go to create a label, what are your options? What have I figured out that has worked for me? And just share that. So if you aren't already, already subscribed to my channel, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button down below if you like reseller content around eBay and Poshmark. And if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. I know a lot of people have asked for this. And although I'm not a shipping expert, I think it's a good starter. And then if you want more information, there's lots of YouTube videos out there for you to explore and watch and learn. And so yeah, let's get started. So I will at the end of this, at the last part of this video, share my shipping experience in case you want to know the fumbling I went through, um, possibly to learn from. But uh, I'm just gonna jump right into those three things. And a disclaimer, shipping is very complex and I do not know everything. I'm not a shipping guru or expert, but I have managed to ship out hundreds and hundreds of items on eBay specifically, and most of them have gone swimmingly, easy. I've gotten there safely, most. I've had a couple misses, but that's okay. So uh, Poshmark makes shipping really easy. So if you are coming from Poshmark, it's different, and it's going to require learning. There's a learning curve to it. Uh, but I think that if you go into it with the mindset of, I'm going to fumble, I'm going to make some mistakes, I might lose some money <laughs> making those mistakes. You will probably learn from those mistakes and then you won't make them again, at least in my situation. So first step, choosing the shipping options when creating an eBay listing. Uh, there are three main options that you need to decide what you want to do. Do you want to offer free shipping? Do you want to have a flat or fixed rate um, on your shipping? Or do you want to do calculated shipping? I currently do all three depending on the item. Most of my items are clothing items um, and they are, most of them can go first class, meaning they're under a pound in weight. And I do flat rate for, for pretty much all clothing items. The only time I really do calculated shipping at the moment is when it's a heavier, bulkier item. So I've sold some very heavy electronics and uh, they're bulky and big and shipping that item to LA versus New York is drastically different in, different in price. So I have learned the hard way that calculated shipping for me is best for some of those larger, bulkier items. And, uh, but, but shipping is pretty easy for me. I'm okay if I charge someone $4 and it comes out to $3.80, I'm okay with that 20 cents because there's gonna be an item that I sell that probably I'm gonna have to pay the 20 cents to. So I just like to keep it simple for myself and for the buyers by having the flat rate on my clothing items. I did do free shipping for the first few months and I think that's a personal choice. I was trying to calculate it into my offers um, like mathematically. So I was trying to, okay, if this item, I would normally want $25, but I'm going to offer free shipping. So I'm not going to take anything less than $30. And then basically they're paying for it in the, the total cost of the item. I wasn't finding that to be the case. I felt like I was still getting people offering me what I would normally expect, but I was also having to pay the shipping. So for me, free shipping, didn't work out. Maybe I could have dabbled in it more, but the reason I decided to give up on free shipping was because I was changing my handling time to two days instead of one day. I do not live close to the post office and last winter on some pretty stormy days, I, uh, my dog is whining because there are some deer just right outside the door and you're not going out there to bother them. So if you hear her whimpering, she's fine. She's just wanting to go bark at the deer. So uh, if you can get to the post office every day, fast and free might be something that you want to do and provide. So that is something that if you have same day or one day handling time and you offer free shipping, you'll have a little, little thing on your listing that says fast and free. 
And that was something I tried to do until I realized that I just didn't want the stress of having to get to the post office every single day. I wanted a little bit more flexibility. Now I do go to the post office every other day and it works out for me. But again, I think that's just personal choice. When I started, that's what I did. And I don't know what kind of difference it makes, but currently the flat fixed rate shipping is working currently with my model. Uh, if you want to see walkthroughs, uh, eBay has a lot of information on their website on how to create a listing. So they have great information. If you don't want to go and read that information, there are lots of videos online of people walking you through with a screen share of how to do a listing, including the shipping stuff. But for the most part, there's some drop downs. You have to input things and it's pretty self-explanatory. So hopefully, and it, it's also just try, try it, trial and error. So Number two, I don't know why, I don't know, two, two, uh, is shipping materials. So at the time when I started eBay, I was only on Poshmark and I was only using free USPS shipping supplies. And so I was using padded flat rate, the Tyvek, I think is what they're called, uh, medium flat rate boxes. Those were a lot of the things I was using for, for Poshmark. And if you're not shipping priority, you can't use those materials. So I actually needed to go and order poly mailers. I didn't care about the decorative ones. If you choose to use them, that's great. It's not something that I was looking or interested in. So I just wanted to get some plain white poly mailers that I could use for some of these clothing items. I do think I have some linked down below um, and they've worked out great for me and they seem to be a good deal. I don't know if it's the best deal, but it seems to be a pretty good deal. And if you buy them in larger quantities, you're always going to get a, a slightly better rate. But um, so poly bags, I needed to order. Uh, boxes. So if something needs to go in a box, I actually just go to dumpsters in town and I'll look for free boxes. Mostly that's for hard goods and things that I need to ship in boxes. Um, but that's, that's how I do get free boxes there. Um, I order basic things online that I normally wouldn't buy. So I'm not a big online shopper. I, I'm just not. And now I have turned to ordering certain things online so that I can get bubble wrap and free boxes sent to me. So it could just be your toilet paper or your paper towels. If you are already an online shopper, you probably already get a lot of free shipping supplies. If you are like me and you, you aren't, it might be time for you to start ordering some stuff online just to kind of get some of those free materials as well. Uh, because it does add up when you're, when you're buying them. Um, and then you can use the free USPS supplies if you are shipping priority mail. And sometimes I do, if they're heavier, clothing items I do. So the other thing that you will need is a scale. Uh, this is linked below. I've never had a problem with it. You can see my coffee cup marks because <laughs> sometimes I put my coffee cup, but uh, I've never had a problem with the weights that I've chosen when I create my listings. And um, yeah, and if you are shipping, you are going to have to put in weights. So if you don't have a scale, you can still ship you're just going to need to do something like flat rate shipping where you don't need to worry about the weight. And that's totally fine. If you want to go that route, it's just going to be a little more expensive for you or the buyer, depending on who's paying for shipping. Okay. So those are some of the things you need to consider as far as getting shipping supplies. It's not, it, you might already do that for Poshmark. A lot of Poshmark sellers already buy uh, the, the cute or, or poly mailers. And um, so it might be just the same for you, but they were new for me when I needed to get started. Third, the third thing is creating a label when something has sold. So uh, there are multiple places you can buy a label. Um, and I made a mistake my very first purchase or sale, and I didn't make that mistake again, but you can buy it on eBay directly. You So when when the item is sold, you could go to that sold item and there's some drop down and you know print shipping label. Um, and that is what I currently do now. When I first started, I actually created my labels on PayPal. I'm not sure why I chose one over the other, other than when I was going to PayPal to see my money, which is another thing about eBay. When you first start, you won't get your money right away because there's kind of a hold while you're new. But once once that hold goes through, um, you get your money deposited right when they make the purchase. Unlike Poshmark, um, you have to wait until they accept the, the, the item. But I, I, you can make, you can purchase the labels on PayPal. Um, you can go to a, an actual post office. You can purchase labels there. The downside there is you're going to have to get the tracking number and type it into the listing to make sure the buyer has that information. Um, 
you can use something like Pirate Ship, which I rarely use, but I have occasionally used and they have really great rates and it might be a good option, especially if you're hard goods um, or looking for like bulkier things or shipping direct. Uh, if you, if you're maybe someone with a social media following, it's a great option as well. And there are lots of other places you can buy labels. There's lots of places online. There's lots of stores you can walk into and buy, buy, get, get something shipped off. So the, the main two for me is eBay and PayPal that I've used. And it, they do have slightly cheaper rates because they have arrangements with the, the services. Um, there's USPS, which I use most of the time for my clothing items. There's UPS and there's FedEx. UPS and FedEx I typically use for larger, heavier, or bulkier items. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of it. When you're creating a label and something is sold on eBay or PayPal, you go to that transaction, there's usually a buy label or print label option. And if you have already put in all the information, so this is something that I don't do. I do not put in weight or dimensions when I make a listing. I only put flat rate, $4, $5, um, and the handling time, which I do two day handling time. And that's it. When I go to ship the item, that's when I actually go to weigh and measure if it's a bulkier item and put that in to figure out the shipping. So some people do it opposite. If you choose to put in the weight and the measurements and measurements, you don't need for first class. You only need it for anything over a pound. And if you choose to do that, then it makes the printing of the label a lot easier versus, so it just depends on where you want to do the work. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's it. I, I, I would say if you were really scared of shipping on eBay, stick to, to flat rate priority shipping. If you have desirable items, people will want to buy them regardless of the shipping cost. Um, and just, you know, either do free and you eat the cost and you just understand that you're going to, you're going to spend that seven or $8 on that padded flat rate or however you want to choose to go about it. Or you can charge the, the buyer. And if it's, like I said, a, a desirable item, they're going to be happy to pay that shipping. Um, so again, I ship mostly clothing. Most of my items, if it's going to LA, it's going to be a little bit cheaper than if it's going to New York, even first class. So I typically will go $4 or $5. $4 if it's a blouse and it's a little bit lighter weight, somewhere under 10 ounces, I usually just charge the buyer $4. And if it's like a pair of pants or a pair of jeans that might be, you know, 15 ounces, um, I'll charge $5. Now, if it's a pair of jeans that I know is over a pound or a big bulky sweater or a leather jacket or something like that, then I typically go the flat rate options. And I just put in, you know, can this, can this squeeze in a, a, a padded flat rate? Great. It's going to be seven thirty three or something like that on eBay. Um, and I just, you typically charge the buyer seven bucks. If it's something that's gonna only fit in a medium flat rate box, I can't remember what it is, but it's like 12 something on eBay, then I'll charge the buyer $12, $12 in flat rate shipping. So that's kind of what I've, I've figured out that works best for me. My shipping might change. I've been changing things as time has gone on. And so, um, for example, I currently use uh, do ship internationally through global shipping program. It is easy for me. I don't have to think about it, but I might be losing potential buyers because global shipping program does cost more for the buyers. And so they might be turned off by that. Like Canada specifically, I've had people email me. I want to buy this. I'm in Canada. Why is your shipping so high? And I send them a message back and I say, because I'm doing global shipping program and I don't, I don't, I don't deal with the shipping internationally. Um, and I might be losing buyers that way. So there's a lot that I can do with shipping and this isn't a definitive, this is the only way to do it, but this is what has worked for me to keep it simple. Uh, if you are going into a store, the first class shipping, and I'm not sure if I already said this, first class shipping only goes up to 12 ounces, like at a post office, at least according to my post office people. Uh, if you are shipping, buying your label on eBay or PayPal, you can go up to 16 ounces or one pound. Um, and weights do matter. Weighing things, not just the item, but also the poly mailer, the label, all of that combined. If you are off even by an ounce or two, they can reject that package. And I think they have a screening process 
Um, and I have heard of people getting packages sent back to them. And that's just a nightmare for you and the buyer. So always rounding up. So if it weighs 7.3 ounces, I'm going to put in eight ounces. Um, and yeah, so that's basically it. Um, that's, that's as simple as I can make it without having too long of a video. Uh, if you want to hear my experience, then I, I guess I can share some of the mistakes I've made. Uh, the very first item I sold was a pair of free people shorts. I took a lower offer. There's a lot of things about eBay. This is just geared more to, uh, shipping, but I might do more eBay videos in the future. But if you have zero feedback, like I did, if you have, you know, basically you've got a brand new account, you might need to take some lower offers to just get some transactions going to start accumulating some feedback. And so I took an offer on a pair of free people shorts with free shipping for $12. Now I had heard a lot of people on YouTube say, oh, this only costs four or $5. So I thought, okay, it's not a huge profit, but I can get a sale. I could potentially get some feedback and um, that's worth it for me, even if I'm only profiting a couple dollars. Well, my dog decided to, to come right here. Well, the problem was I didn't want to figure out the labels online. I didn't want to figure, I, it's just, it's a new platform. And it's like, I just don't want to deal with this. So I went into a, I think it was like a mailboxes ink. I was out of town and I had communicated with the buyer that I was going to try my best to get it shipped out. It was my first transaction. Um, and so I'd already let them know in case there were any problems and they were very patient and understanding. Uh, I took it to this mailboxes ink and the guy, I bought a poly bag there because I didn't have any. And the guy ended up trying to charge me eight or $9. And it was like going into a weekend. I needed to get it shipped out that day. Uh, and so I ended up having to pay that Luna, come here. Um, I ended up having to pay that because I didn't have any other options at that time. It was like the end of the day. And I, so I basically made zero profit on my first item, but I did get positive feedback. The item did get to the person and all worked out. I, when you do buy a label at a store or facility like that, you need to get a tracking number from them and you need to go put that into eBay because that was the other mistake I, I made. I didn't, I didn't, I never got the tracking information. And so when I sent her a message, okay, it's shipped off. Can you send me the tracking? I didn't get one. So, uh, yeah, I mean, lots of fumbling with that first transaction. Some of the other issues I've, I've encountered, um, not all clothing will go first plaque, first class. So I have had many times where I've charged the buyer five bucks and then I've learned, wow, this weighs 1.6 ounces, one pound, six ounces. And now I need to put it in a, let's say it's bulky. Now it's only going to fit into a medium flat rate. Now I'm, you know, having to pay $7 out of my profit to get that to them. Um, so there are, there are, I think a lot of fumbling that happens. I do hard goods occasionally and electronics. I've never had any problems with my electronics. And most of those I ship through UPS or FedEx. Um, when you go onto eBay, you can uh, put in the weight and the dimensions and you can kind of compare. One thing I've recently learned is UPS is kind of all on its own. You have to kind of go through UPS's site, but you can create an account through your eBay store so it's all connected. So it can get very complex and it is much more complex with hard goods and heavier or breakable items. Shipping for clothing for me has been almost 99% of the time through USPS, first class, or priority mail. And it's pretty easy. So if you get a scale, if you get some poly mailers, and if you just dedicate a night, not even a night, when you, when you first item sells, you're just going to have to spend a little bit of time to fumble through the process and, and, and figure out, you know, buying a label on eBay or PayPal. But we've all done it. And we've all learned and we've all made mistakes. And um, I think that's just part of the process. So as long as you go into it knowing you're going to make those mistakes, setting that expectation, then, you know, you'll probably be just fine. And, you know, again, lots of YouTube videos out there. I, I, I don't answer direct questions. If I get a lot of questions of the same question, I'll usually make a video about it. Um, but each situation is so different with shipping. So the best thing to do is fumble through, if that makes any sense. And that's okay. Um, but that's it. That's it. That's all I have. Hopefully this was simple enough for any Poshmark seller to just figure out if you want a screen share, there are lots of them out there, how to ship with eBay, put it in YouTube, look for the people showing their screen. Um, it wasn't something I wanted to do because you know, it just, 
depends on each specific thing. This was more of a generalized thing, but just start. That's my best piece of advice is just start, make the mistakes, learn from those mistakes. And in a year you'll be, you won't even be sweating. You won't even be sweating shipping after a month. It will just be easy. So hit the thumbs up if you liked this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.